super in the season. Everything is going to be about pumpkins and Halloweens and leaves of various colors that are not green. And death. Okay. So, um, there's a question on the on the board. <clears throat> We've seen yesterday, we saw that almost every function you can think of is continuous. Uh, so we, so polynomials are continuous, rational functions are continuous, individual main, exponentials are continuous, uh, logs are continuous. I meant to write logs here. Uh, sine, cosine, tangent, all those are continuous. Their inverses are continuous. Anything you get from adding, subtracting, multiplying, or dividing those are continuous. Um, piecewise defined functions have no reason to be continuous because you've defined them in a weird way. But still, there's functions you know about that I haven't covered. So, uh, can anyone think of a function that I haven't mentioned right now? Quadratic, that's a polynomial. I mean, I guess I didn't say, I didn't say roots, but I wrote roots. Algebraic functions include roots. Any other ideas? The thing is, what I tell you, maybe you'll think it was unfair uh, because it's not going to be any any sort of weird, strange thing. <clears throat> Well, Garrett is awake, and that's that's all I wanted <clears throat> for one person to be awake. How about um, how about this function or the root of cosine x plus one or the logarithm of the sine of the tangent? So these functions are not um, are none of the above because, for, for example, the first one, it's not a trig function. It has a trig function in there, but I mean, sine of exponential, odd function. That's the next cube. That's a polynomial still. Um, uh, this function is not exponential, it's not trig, it's, well, what it is, it's a composition of, of those. Um, <coughs> so, so that's what's next. <coughs> so, um, and once we have compositions, that now that does cover anything you could write, basically, um, until you start inventing new functions. But so, um, so there's two things I want to say that are very related. Um, say, so, yeah, so many formulas. So the first theorem um, if f is a continuous function, and say x equals b, and The limit, the 
limit of another function g at x equals a is b, then um, uh, the limit of the composition is uh, is what you get by plugging in. <coughs> so, what do I mean here? Um, so, taking, so doing f composed with g, that means you take x, you do g, and then to whatever you get, you do f. Maybe I will write it like, uh, like this. So you do x, you uh, you take x, you do some operations to it, you get a you get a result, and then to that result you do the second set of operations, and you get another result. So this is saying um, if x g has a limit, I'm trying. I think the confusing part here is um, why is there a, a b here and an a here and a b here. So what's the relation between this B and this B? So um, the thing is SX, as X approaches uh, A, G of X. approaches um, B. This is what the what this limit here is saying. And now maybe if we call Y equals G of X um, as Y So now, what is y going to be approaching? Well, I just said y is approaching b. And what is f of y approaching? So now I'm taking whatever uh, g spits out, fitting it into f. So I have to ask what is f of y approaching? Uh, and it approaches. Um, the limit, uh, well, by, by definition of the limit, it approaches whatever the limit is, but this is f of um, b. Because f is continuous. I said if f is continuous at the beginning. So, this place is so convenient. <clears throat> um, so here's something I've learned recently. He has a he has a regret tool. Oh, look at that! Wow, that's awesome. <clears throat> so. What did I just say? I said the limit as y approaches a of f of, uh, sorry, y approaches b. This is f of uh, b. Oh no, oh. This was supposed to be f of b, oh my god, okay. I was going to reach the, the wrong conclusion anyway. So, um, this is what I just said. But now I said, why is what I'm calling G of X? I just um, uh, give it a different name to make it clear in my head. So, this is, I guess, sort of the limit as G of X approaches. Um, 
v of f of g of x. And I said this is what happens as x approaches a. So this is sort of, uh, this is a so-so explanation of these facts. But the thing is, the moral of the story is that if you compose two functions um, and the outer function, it, the second function is continuous, you just plug the limit into the second function. Um, and let me show you an example right now of that. Let's see the example in the book, um, which is the arc sine of one minus root x divided by one minus x. So we have, so this is the composition of two things. Um, we have on the inside, we have a function that is not gonna be continuous because I definitely cannot plug x equals one in there. And on the outside, I have a function that is continuous. Uh, as, I mean, it's continuous as long as this is plants in the domain, which I mean, if it doesn't, then this is not even gonna make sense. So, um, so let's do the limit of the inside. So this limit, like I just said, I'm not gonna be able to plug in this equals soundness or undefined, but <clears throat> I feel like calling it sadness today. So um, I need to simplify that, do something with it. What can I do? I can think of at least two things I can do. Conjugate. Okay. Um, I really need to give you more examples where the answer is not multiplied by the conjugate, just so you don't you don't start betting all your money on conjugating every time. But here it's it is gonna work. Um, so I don't like this square root in the numerator. Let's see if I like it better in the denominator. So I can get rid of it by multiplying by the same thing with this ch change sign because um, when you multiply a sum by a difference, something magical happens um, where uh, things cancel out and you're left with the difference of squares. because you have to multiply everything by everything. And I have, if I multiply these together, I have one minus root X plus root X minus X. These two cancel, of course, you don't have to do this whole thing if you know this is sometimes a difference, which you do know because why would you why would you multiply by this um if, if you didn't know so one minus x in the numerator oh the denominator has another one minus x that we can cancel so if x is not one it makes sense to cancel here uh which is not because we're computing the limit exactly at x equals one and we don't care what happens at x equals one exactly. So this limit now I can plug in. This is one. So this is a continuous function. It's an algebraic function and x equals one is in the domain. 
how do I know it's in the domain? Because I know I can plug in one and get one half. So there's the limit of the inside. Um, the second part is saying arc sine is continuous. Oof, what are you doing? Continuous. So, so this is very important. Um, the place where it has to be continuous is at the at the at the point that I got at, at the thing that I'm going to plug in, not at the value of x. So, this has to be continuous at one half. Um, and it doesn't matter even even it doesn't matter what happens uh, at x equals one. Because what's going into our sign now are numbers that are very close to one half. This is very important. So is arc sine continuous at one half? Well, it's an inverse strict function. So as long as one half is in the domain, then that's fine. And remember that the domain of arc sine, what's the domain of arc sine? What's the domain of arc sine? It's one half and ne negative one to one. All right, thank you, uh, Dustin is negative one to one, which is the range of its inverse. Uh, which is the range of sine. So uh, one half is definitely between negative one and one. So uh, the, the theorem, what the theorem says, is that this limit of arc sine composed with uh, this other function can just be found by plugging in uh, the limit that I got on the inside. <clears throat> Ooh, what is the arc sine of one half? Uh, the arc sine of one half is the angle that has um, the angle between negative 90 degrees and 90 degrees that has sine equal to one half. So if your sine equals one half, that means you're in this y coordinate. It means you're this angle. What's this angle? Thirty. There you go. It's got to be 30, 45, or 60. So you had a, a one in three chance of getting it. 30 degrees, which is pi over six radians. So the answer is pi over six. So, um, so what happened here? Basically, because arc sine was continuous. Let me write it down. Since arc sine is continuous, we were able to just plug in the limit the limit of the arc sine of some stuff. In this case, the stuff is this algebraic function. We were able to just compute the limit and then plug it into arc sine. Which is a, a really convenient thing that happened. Otherwise, I don't know how we would have done this limit. Ugh, that's not what I meant to write.
So the limit of a compass's function is equal. So I'm reading what uh, Garrett is saying. The limit of a compass's function is equal to the limit of the interior function when they're both continuous. Um, not quite. The the limit of a the limit of a compass's function is what you get from plugging in the limit of the inside into the outside when when the uh, the inside is continuous. So when they're both continuous, that's the next slide. That's the next thing I'm going to say about. So when the, the outside function f is continuous, the limit is obtained by plugging in the limit of the inside into the outside. So what's happening is you can work from the inside out, you can compute the limit of the inside it and then plug it plug it in. So we started we started with the limit inside and we said this is approaching one half. And now if, if this is approaching one half, maybe I'm gonna write in the next slide. Oh, there's a, so if I hit the keyword shortcut for, uh, for Zoom, how do I close this? If I hit the keyword shortcut for Zoom, I only got the keyword, I also got the one for Google. <sighs> so they can both mess with me at the same time. That's just great. That's just what you want. This is like a thing from before you were born, isn't it? <clears throat> so what I did summing up is I said the limit of arc sine of this whole thing is arc sine is continuous. So let me um, put the limit inside here. Uh, let's do the limit, which I did in the previous page, and then just plug in and see what I get. That's what uh, we just did. Does that make sense? Other questions? So in these situations, um, F is going to be continuous at whatever like the limit of the inside function is. Yeah. Uh, is there going to be a situation where like f won't be continuous? Uh, I guess it could. Um, then you have to do something else. That could be oof, that could be complicated. Um, that that could be pretty messy. I'm not gonna do an example right now of that. I think it would be very confusing. I mean, it's not the most common thing you'll see. Um, you, you're more likely to see, to see things, you know, things that look like this formula, where basically it's made of continuous functions, except it's at x equals one, it's not defined. So we have to figure out what happens at x equals one. Wait, okay. other questions? So, um, so that's what happens if the outside function is continuous. But let's see now what happens if both functions are continuous. Well, then life is great. Um, because I was saying, I was saying, if only f is continuous, then do the limit of the of the inside, plug it into the outside. So the thing is, the limit of a continuous function is pretty easy normally because I just get from plugging in. So 
um, if G is continuous at X equals A. And so like before, I don't care what happens to F at X equals A, it could be not defined for all I care. What I care is what happens um, at, at, at the output of G because I'm gonna compose it. Then the limit of the composition F composed with G, you get by just plugging in. In other words, what's a function that you get? What, what's the words for a function where you get the limit of, of plugging in? That's called, that's what we call the continuous function. It's continuous at which point, um, continuous. Well, the point that I'm plugging into into F composed with G is X equals A. So the, comp and if, of course, if they were continuous everywhere, both of them, then the composition would be continuous everywhere. Like the exponential of the sine, for example. <clears throat> um, so the reason for this is, um, the reason for this is the, the previous thing. So from before, If F is continuous, then the limit of of a composition like this, I can put the um, it lets me put the limit inside of the function. But now, so this is what's happening if F is continuous, but if G is continuous. at x equals a, that means that the limit is just g of a. And that's it. So that means that anything you get by composing continuous functions is continuous um, in, the, in its domain. So uh, what does that mean? It means um, that everything I wrote in the first page, anything, so you, you know a bunch of continuous functions, now you know that if you plug one into another and you do this 13 times, uh, you get a continuous function. And now that covers basically every formula you could ever think of. Um, because formulas are made of, where did you get pi over six? Probably like a while ago, wasn't it? Uh, yeah, I got pi over, uh, Bernie, sorry, I missed your message. I got pi over six because I know that from memory, but you can put it into a calculator if you don't remember. Uh, so the composition of continuous functions is continuous. So this is do the exponential and then do sine. So compose exponential with sine that's continuous everywhere because the domain of this function nothing, no X is gonna break this formula. Um, here I'm taking cosine, which is continuous, adding one that makes it still continuous and then taking the square root, that's also continuous. Uh, and here I'm composing tangent with sine with log and that's gonna be continuous in its domain and it would be a, um, I mean, this has a complicated domain. Oh, this is, I, I want to grab this function now. I was sort of writing randomly, but um, make, a, make a mental image in your mind of what you think log of the sine of tangent it looks like. Ready? Oh my God, what is this? It repeats every two pi, every pi, it has, a lot of crazy stuff. But the thing is, um, I mean, clearly there's a very bad point here where the sine of the tangent is zero. 
or with the ten or, or with it, no. A lot of things are wrong with this function. The tangent could have an uh, could be not defined, uh, and there the sign goes crazy. Or you could be you can't take the log of a negative number. A lot of things uh, are happening here. The domain of this function, I think, is pretty complicated. Um, but the thing is, we're, we're, if we're actually within the domain, the function is continuous. It's clearly having a bad, a bad day around here, but here it's continuous, which is what the theorem is telling us. <coughs> So, uh, so how can we apply this business with the uh, two continuous functions? I mean, that's a lot of sign. the log of the sign continuous Oof, every time so um, the answer is that this is a composition of continuous functions so it's continuous in its domain um, So the answer is that all we need to do is compute the domain. And this is something you were doing before at some point in your childhood. I know your childhood might have been last year. Or maybe it's still going on. Um, so all we have to do is compute the domain. So what's the domain of sine? What numbers can I plug into sign and get uh, an answer? Uh, Matthew gets it right. Matthew gets the point. Negative infinity to infinity. The, so all numbers. Um, what is the domain? the domain of logarithm. Zero infinity, yeah. So log is the inverse of the exponential. Um, so I can't take the log of zero because there's no number such that e to the x is zero. E to the x is always positive. Um, and e to the x is also never negative. Um, it's the range of the exponential. Uh, the exponential looks like this. I think, you, I'm pretty sure you know this one. Um, the range um, is this, not including zero. Log, remember, looks like this, looks like the mirror image. The domain I can see is everything but zero here. So, so now we gotta be really careful with, um, so here, that this means that X can be any number. Because what we're plugging into sine is X, but this doesn't mean that X can be a positive number. So, This doesn't mean 
can can be or has to be. The, the thing that has to be positive is is what we're plugging into x, into log, uh, which is sine of x. Sine of x is the is the function that needs to be between zero and positive infinity. Uh, I think if you're doing this problem, this is where you make a mistake. If you're gonna make a mistake, um, sine of x uh, is because it's what we're plugging into log. It doesn't matter if we take a negative number, maybe we can plug it into this function as long as it's fine, uh, it's, still, uh, it's still positive. I plug it, I, I take x equals to negative pi over two, I, I do sine of that and that's a positive number and then I get log of that. And I can do it because I'm doing log of a positive number. Is what I'm plugging into log. What, what needs to be positive? So, for example, here's a negative number. Oh, that bad example though. Scratch what I just said. I did the sign wrong. Negative three pi over two is three three hundred and sixty degrees away from ninety degrees. Um, So this is the angle I'm looking for. Uh, log of sine of negative three pi over two is the same as the log of the sine of 90 degrees. It's log of one. The log of one, I can definitely compute what number do I need to take the exponential of to get, to get one, um, zero. No. What I mean is one, one is e to the zero, so log of one is zero. So this number is in the domain, um, even though it's negative, because its sign is positive. And if we take a positive number with negative sign, or maybe x equals or x equals pi is positive, but it's not going to be in the domain because log of sine of pi pi is over here, uh, sine of pi is zero and log of zero does not exist. So there's negative numbers in the domain, there's positive numbers not in the domain. The thing is, the domain is consists of the numbers whose sine is positive. The, the set of numbers such that sine of x is positive. So what is the set of numbers? Um, well, I can do the graph of sine. I know this is zero by 2 pi, 3 pi. Someone help me. what the set of numbers is, uh, such that sine of x is between zero. Okay, pi over two is a number in that set that I'm asking for, which are, what are what is every number uh, such that the, its sign is positive? And there's infinitely many of those numbers, so don't give me a list. You need to give me some sort of intervals. 
Justin, you're getting you you're giving me two angles now. You're getting close to giving me a list. Um, I don't have time for a list of infinitely many numbers. What is the set of numbers? that have positive sign pi over two plus two and pi. So, okay, so those are, um, those definitely have positive sign. You're giving me a set of numbers that have sign equal to one, which is positive. Pi over two, pi over two plus two pi, pi over two plus three pi. So you're giving me these numbers, these, these angles which have the sign all the way up here. But there's a, there's a lot of other points um, in that graph that are about the uh, x-axis, like this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one. What are, what are all of those? We don't talk, I, I'm gonna talk about them, so. There's one degree, there's two degrees, there's three degrees, there's four degrees, there's five degrees. I'm not, I don't wanna keep going, I'm boring myself. What are these numbers? How do you describe them all without? You know, listing them. Are they on numbers? Uh, so, so here's sign. So one is here, three is here, uh, five is here. So five is odd and it has a, okay, interval. Uh, Shai, I do want an interval, zero to one. So zero to one is here. This is not, this is not the whole thing. Zero to one. It's definitely the starting point is zero. It's zero to something. Uh, the thing is, two n plus one pi. So that that's you're giving me Gary. You're giving me a multiple of pi. So that's um, that's gonna have sign zero. Uh, what's this number here that I have to go up to to get positive signs? Is it in three point one and three point two? I think. <clears throat> what, are, what are these six, this set of X um, coordinates? Zero to two pi, zero to pi. So this is zero to two pi. Oh, no doubt. Zero to two pi is basically every angle. Uh, half of those have positive sign, half have negative sign. It's zero to pi. Um, okay, so all the numbers that have positive sign are the numbers in here. These are the numbers between zero and pi. And then, you're right, Jake, yeah. I guess um, you could also see it in the circle, the positive signs are the possible y-coordinates and 
the smallest angle that has positive y coordinate is zero, and the biggest angle is pi, or 180 degrees. Uh, so the answer is zero to pi, and then anything you get by adding two pi to that. Um, four pi less than x less than pi pi, etc. cetera. Uh, if you like your ends, um, it's, um, you add two and pi to both sides. So, <clears throat> so the interval, so it's zero to pi. If you like an interval union two pi, three pi, union four pi, five pi, and there's an infinite number of them. So zero to pi, and then two pi from three, two pi to three pi, from four pi to five pi, from six to seven, and so on. And those are the numbers uh, that we can plug into a uh, sine composed wave log, as we can see here. <clears throat> The log of the sine has exactly the domain uh, between zero and as I approach pi, uh, everything collapses. Then between pi and two pi, there's nothing. Then between two pi and three pi. Um, so that's the domain. And the point of this was that it's continuous in there. Um, so, it's, it's continuous in the domain, and if it's not in the domain, it doesn't even mean to say that it's continuous. It doesn't mean anything. So this is the domain. So this is where um uh log composed with sign is continuous so basically questions like these questions of asking where something is continuous uh unless the function is defined in pieces they're questions of um what is the domain and i guess the domain could be complicated anything could be complicated um, but that's how we do them. Oh, you got to review your trick. Um, you haven't noticed yet, you know, when, when I have to do like sine of zero, the arc sine of one, things like that, that's just stuff I need to use every day. So, uh, oof, you need to learn that. I mean, at least remember that you can just plug it into a calculator and it will tell you but I just gotta use that every day. I can't stop and remember every time. Okay, are there any questions? 